Well, Karen, we have not met before, mm -hmm. but I certainly feel like I know you from seeing your work. And now, having seen this film, I feel like I really know you. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll have to see the film to maybe get the full significance of that. But uh, what a delightful film. Oh, great. I'm glad you like it. Yes, because I think there is always a market for a good love story. Now, this is, in so many ways, a, what I would call a classic love story. Do you see it that way? Yeah, I mean, I never thought thought in terms of the word classic, I guess, but I mean, we always thought of it as a love story, and and I suppose classic in the sense maybe that it's set in a city like Paris, which is the classic city of love, or you know, one of the most romantic spots on the globe. Yes, of course, I think most people probably identify you most with Raiders, don't they? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think to most people that would be, you say Karen Allen, they say Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now, you did that in, in 1981, and it came out in 1981, and um, I would imagine that after that, every producer would say, get me Karen Allen, because you were just so strong in that, and you had such a dynamic image. And, in actual fact, did that happen? Did they come busting the door down? Well, there were a lot of offers. I got a lot of offers to do a lot of different kinds of films after Raiders, but for me it represented a completely different kind of opportunity. I thought the film was so successful and it, it sort of opened up um, opportunity. And then for me it was f deciding what I wanted to do with that opportunity. And I felt at that point in my life I had started working on the stage and then I had started making films and in an effort to really learn about film acting as opposed to acting on the stage, I hadn't worked in the theater for about four or five years and what I really wanted to do more than anything was go back and work on the stage. So after Raiders came out, I just said, I'm not going to do another film for two years. And I didn't. I just I went back and I did four plays over the next two year period of time, which was exactly what I wanted to do. and, and this was really, until September, was the first film that I had read. I mean, I would upon occasion read scripts, but it was the first thing I read that really um, sort of excited my imagination and made me think I was ready to, to start working in film again and, and made me really want to start working in film again because I read it and I, and I just fell in love with the story and the character. and. Did you, in fact, turn down some roles? In other words, uh, in that interim period, did you turn down and say, no, I've read it, but I don't want to do it? Film scripts? Uh-huh. Yeah. What did you turn down? Oh, I can't. I can't say. It's terrible to say, you know? I mean, because in saying, then you're letting other actors know that, that they were somebody's second choice or third choice, and it's just something we don't do. <laughs> okay. I respect that. I respect that. This uh, fellow you play, I mean, this fellow you play opposite, uh, the, the Frenchman. In actual fact, do you think he is a typical Frenchman? Gosh, I, I, I don't know if I know what a typical Frenchman is. This is the first time I had ever spent any length of time in France. And I don't think I really went there having an idea of what the typical Frenchman is. I suppose except from old 40s movies, Marie Chevalier or something like that. Um, but do you think that they still think that way as far as family and then, uh, you know, extramarital affairs, mistresses, uh, you know, you think they still think that way? It seems to me that they do and it seems to me also from talking to a lot of people that a lot of people immediately related to this story and, and that it is, it is a way of life there, much more so than in London or in New York or, or a, a way of looking both at their marriages and at what makes a good marriage and also love. The idea of love is not necessarily having to do with, with being monogamous, which is, I guess, a, a, a I'm, I'm sure that it, it's not shared by everyone all over, but it seems to be in France, but it seems to be a, a theme of the Parisian people, at least. Would you want to be married to a Frenchman who believed that way and felt that way? Oh, 
I don't think so. I think I am as corny as it probably sounds today. <laughs> I'm like really like happy in a one-on-one -on -one situation with somebody. And I think I've never been married, so I, I have yet to test this out. But I really think um, I really have a lot of respect for the bonds of marriage, you know, the, the, between two people. And I think if you're going to make the decision to get married, I can't imagine what, why, you know, you would also, it's like having your cake and eating it too. I mean, maybe for some people it works out and maybe some people go into marriage with the idea that the marriage is limited. It is good in this way, but, but they still have things that they want to explore. But I, I think I would prefer to remain single and have good relationships with several people or something. I, I just, somehow marriage and that kind of attitude don't go together for me. What you're saying, Karen, is that no, your husband is not <laughs> going to have a mistress, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> when we get right down to plain English. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wanted to ask you, which was more difficult for you as an actress, doing the snake pit in Raiders or the nude love scenes in this movie? Ah, well, there wasn't anything particularly hard about doing the snake scenes except um, I, I did have to get used to the snakes, which took me about a day. And then, I mean, that kind of stuff is, is not the most, I mean, I spent 10 weeks, not 10 weeks, two weeks, just waving a, a big piece of wood with fire on the end of it and screaming at, at these snakes. But the love scenes were wonderful to do. I mean, they're, they're, the nature of them is wonderful because they're sort of, I think, unusual in the way that they're, that they're, um, that they're done, just in the kind of um, gentleness of the relationship between the two people and in the fact that we kind of come upon them sort of talking as opposed to them really being love scenes. They're love scenes that come from the intimacy of what they're saying to each other and not saying and when they get embarrassed or uncomfortable as opposed to anything really sexual in nature. Was all of them. that scripted or did you and, and Terry kind of ad-lib parts of it? It was all scripted, I think. It's I mean, there may be like you. little moments or something in it where, where, you know, we added a word here and there, but I think it was all written down that way. Did you ever at any time during those nude love scenes think, my gosh, I wonder what Terry's wife is going to say when she sees this? No, I don't think so. I don't think you can let all those things creep into it. I mean, you're playing a character and you've agreed to do the film and I think our job is to make it work and for us to appear on the screen as though we're completely relaxed and comfortable in the characters. And I think as soon as you start letting that stuff go through your mind at all, you're creating a separation that is going to make you self-conscious and Usually, you, those are the kind of things that you can read on screen if somebody's uncomfortable or they're, you know, thinking about other things. Or well, again, Karen, I have to say it's the most enjoyable film oh, and uh, very convincing in every way. <laughs> Great. So, so I hope it does well for oh, you and you for much. Terry. And thank you for talking with us today. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a pleasure.